Hi guys, today we are going to learn how we can implement IoT with Flutter. By using IoT, we can make some cool projects and control anything we want with a mobile application. For this project, we are going to follow this article. This article is basically divided into uh, four main parts. First of all, we have to set up the ESP and connect the RGB light. In this in this project, we are we are going to control the colors of an RGB light uh, with a mobile application that will be developed in Flutter. So the first step is to set up the ESP32 and then connect the LED with it by using jumper wires. So before pr proceeding, you guys should know the basics of Arduino and its coding. You guys should know the basics of Flutter. You guys should have some knowledge about Firebase and how it works. And of course, you guys need an ESP32, some jumper wires for the connection and uh, one RGB light. So for, for this project, I'm going to be using this uh, model of the ESP32. I got the dev kit V1, but you guys can use uh, any module you guys have. And then we are going to use this LED. This is the RG, uh, RGB LED. Here are the uh, connections of the RGB. Let me just show you guys how I connected mine. So here's my LED. It's connected with the ESP32. And I have connected the R pin of the LED, which is the first pin. I think you guys can see. Here is the first pin in the corner. I have connected it with the wire jumper wire, and this pin is connected with the pin 32 of ESP32. Okay. And then I have connected. I have connected the G pin to the pin number 33, which is the third pin. And I have connected the V pin to the pin number 25 of ESP32, which is the last pin. And then the common pin was connected to the 3.3 volts of the ESP32. Let me just show you. The black pin is a common pin, which is the second one. It is connected to the 3.3 volts of ESP32, which is right here. And the other three pins are R, G, and B are connected with the pin number 33, 32, and then 25. You guys can follow uh, this procedure as well, or you guys can choose pins on your uh, on your own. Now the first part is done. Now for the second part, we have to uh, create a Firebase project and then connect it with the ESP32 and then uh, make a make an application to control our uh, ESP32. So first of all, you guys have to click here and it will open the Firebase console for you guys. Click this console, go to console and create a new project. Then now on this screen, we have to enter a project name. Let's suppose we enter LED controller for now. And then hit continue and continue. Select an account, the default account, and then create the project. Now it will take like eight to 10 seconds to, to create the project. Hit the continue button and then you will see the dashboard of your project like this. After doing this, we have to um, go to the auth auth authentication and then the build section, which is right here. Just press, press this build section and then press the authentication button. Click this button. Now enable the email and password. Uh, sign in by tapping this enable button and then save it. Now go to this user section and then add a new user. This account will be used in the ESP32 to, to authenticate the Firebase. Basically, we cannot read or write anything from the Firebase unless we uh, sign in to the Firebase account. So we have to uh, sign in to, to Firebase in order to make sure that we are uh, reading to the values that were that uh, that will be saved in the in our database so just create a, an account like test at gmail.com and then create a random password and then click the add user button now for the next part we need the database so in order to create a database go to the build section 
and then click this real time database you press the create database button choose the server location and then start in test mode click the start in test mode button and then click the enable button okay so here is the dashboard for your real time database what you have to do next is create a string variable which will be named as color and then give a random value to it let's suppose we give a random value which is uh, red for now uh, tap this button and then in the key section write color and then in the value section write drag and hit enter and you guys will see that the variable color has been created in the database we are we are going to listen this variable from our ESP32 and then show the corresponding color based on this value and uh, from the application we are we are, we are going to uh, change this, this variable from the application after doing this make sure you guys uh, copy this section of your database this is your database URL and then you need the authentication API as well so copy this thing somewhere else somewhere and then go to the settings project settings and here is your default web API key you guys have to copy this thing and paste it somewhere else or save it somewhere else because we need this thing in the ESP32 code so let's just go we are done with this with the second part now for the third part make sure you guys have Arduino IDE installed in your computer then you have to copy this link this whole link and then open up the Arduino go to the preferences and then paste the URL here after pasting this URL you guys have to go to the boards manager and then search for ESP32 because we are uh, gonna work on the ESP32 so we need the library to include uh, the boards of ESP32 so install this one after installing this one you guys will see the, the ESP32 uh, in the boards so now you guys have to connect your ESP32 with the, a cable right now I'm not connected you, can, you guys can see here I'm not connected so I'm gonna connect the cable to connect my ESP32 with the computer after connecting the ESP32 make sure you guys uh, check the, the correct serial port right now I'm on the serial port 001 so I'm gonna click on this thing and you guys can see that I am connected with the ESP32 if you guys are not seeing the correct board you guys have to go to the board manager and then choose uh, ESP dev module for your ESP right now you can see that the, the light is uh, glowing on my ESP32 let me show you it is connected to the computer you've done this part after doing all this setup go to the library manager Okay, so after doing this part, go to the library manager, which is right here, and then install Firebase ESP32. Firebase for ESP32. And hit enter, and then you guys have to install the Firebase ESP32 client, which is right here. I've already installed it, so you guys have to install this, this thing. After doing this thing, it's time to code our ESP32. So you guys can come to this section of the article and then uh, clone, clone or download the zip of the ESP32 code which is right here. So just press this, this link in the article and then download the zip from here. 
and then extract it in your computer and then uh, run it uh, by using the Arduino IDE. So I have the code here. After downloading the, the code, what you can do is we have to change the Wi Fi uh, in the code and then we have to uh, put the Firebase API and the Firebase auth API that we just uh, copied from the Firebase. And we also have to add the, the user email and password that we just created. So go to your code. First of all, go to the connect to Wi Fi section. Right here, connect to Wi-Fi.cpp, and then enter your Wi-Fi SSID here. Enter your password here. Then go to the Firebase setup section right here. Enter the Firebase host URL here, which is the database URL, and the auth URL, which is the auth API, the web web auth API that we just copied uh, previously. And then enter the user email here and password here. After connecting this, we are good to go. Now the code is uh, the code is consisted of four four parts. First part is to connect the ESP module to the internet, which is uh, the function connect to Wi-Fi. This function will basically connect our module to the uh, Wi-Fi. And then we are setting up the output pins. Right now we are using three pins. The first pin is the uh, red pin, which is the pin number thirty-two for our ESP thirty-two. The next one is thirty-three, which is a green pin. The the G pin of uh, the LED and the last pin is blue pin, which is the pin number uh, 25. After setting up, we have to connect our ESP with the Firebase project that we just made. So just tap here, and you guys will see that this function is uh, responsible for connecting to the Firebase account that we just made. Uh, sorry, the project we just made. And then finally, we have to listen to the data, the, the data we just made right here. We have to listen this variable. Right now the color is red, so it will continuously listen to this thing, and it will change the color of LED based on this this thing. So the stream data contains all the data. Right here we have just binded a stream with the variable color in the database, and if if something goes wrong, it will uh, if something goes wrong, it will print this line, or else it will just initiate your project. Then we got two more. Um, Functions. First one is the assign color, and then the second one is the handle LED color. The assign color will basically give this give this string, and then based on the color, it will assign an enum variable to the col color variable, which is right here. This is an enum variable. It is defined here. We go uh, right now. We got four uh, three colors. The first one is red, blue, and white. We, we are going to show three colors on our uh, LED. So that's why we are using three colors for now. So that's it for the ESP part. Now you guys can tap this button for uploading the code. I have already uploaded the code, so I'm not going to do it again. So after uploading the code, we have to clone the, the application part of the Firebase. So you guys can come to this Flutter app part and then press this thing, this link. And then open up, uh, press this button and then clone this uh, URL. and Go to the VS Code, press F1, and then clone this project and save it somewhere. I have already done it. So after after cloning the project, the project will look like uh, this. The first step for us is to connect this project uh, to the Firebase project that we just created. So I'm gonna using uh, I'm gonna be using the Flutter 5 CLI. If you don't have the Flutter 5 CLI on your uh, computer installed, you guys can download. You just have to search for Flutter 5. Tap this link, Flutterfire CLI, and then follow the instructions to install the uh, the CLI in this section. You guys just have to run this command and then uh, run this command, and it will be installed in your computer. So after installing, make sure you guys are logged in uh, in the Firebase uh, in the VS Code IDE, so you guys can log log in in the IDE by using this command, Firebase login. But I'm already logged in, so I don't have to run it again. After doing this, we, what we have to do is configure the Firebase, uh, Firebase and then connect our project with the Firebase uh, project that we just created. So I'm going to write Flutter Fire config and hit enter. And it will show me 
the projects that I have in my um, database. So I'm gonna be using the smart plug and then by tapping space you can uncheck or check something. Right now I just want an Android and iOS application so I'm gonna untick the Mac OS and web version and hit the enter. This, is our, this will automatically um, create a, a file based options file right here and then it will automatically copy all the all the JSON files that are required to connect to the Firebase. So the Firebase part has been done and now we can just run our application on, on, our, uh, on, the, on the device. So We are done with this part. The log so the logic thing is basically in the LED controller dot dot. Basically, it's happening. We got three buttons in our application. The first one is red, the second one is blue, and the and the third one is white. So what will happen if we tap the red button? The variable in the database will change in change to red. If we tap the blue icon, it will be changed to blue. And if we tap the white icon, it will be changed to white. So based on based on the variable uh, variables value the ESP will read the value and then change the color of the LED so we can just run the application in our emulator this function is responsible for changing the variable and this is connected to our front end we got three buttons right here the first one is called red the second one is called blue and the third one is called white so this function is uh, connected to uh, three buttons right here the first one is red blue and then white it will just push the value to the database so let's just wait for the application to run if you guys want to check whether your ESP is working or not You guys can just go to the database and then change the variable to something else like right now I'm I am seeing a red light now if I convert this variable to something else let's suppose I change it to white hit enter and you guys can see that the LED is not now white so everything is uh, oops you can see you guys can see the that the LED is white. So this variable is responsible for controlling everything. So yeah, here is the application. So I'm just gonna show you guys how it looks. So right now the LED is white. If I'm tapping the blue icon, you guys can see that, that the LED is blue. If I'm tapping the white, it will turn into white. If I tap the red and it will be converted to red so that's it for this project i hope everything was clear if you guys don't understand something you guys can comment on the video thank you so much